So we're back at, we're still at Ronald Boggs Park in Shoreline, Washington. Can, can they see the bog behind us? Boggy bottom, this body of water. Part of the bog. And now we want to do some proofs with replacement rules. And so we have a nice little replacement rule proof up here. Mark, do you want to try it? Sure. Go ahead. I like this first one for you guys because this is a pattern you'll see in a number of arguments. And it doesn't initially look like anything can happen here, but uh, there's a real common pattern here. Once you see how to do it, you slide by. But one out of five arguments, it seems to me, well, a lot of arguments has this pattern. This doesn't seem to fit any rule we've got, a negated conditional. What the heck are you going to do with a negated conditional? Well, check this out. Anytime I see a negated conditional, I'm actually quite happy because I'm going to do two things to it. And right away, after that, things get really nice for me. Try this. First of all, do implication on the thing inside the parentheses. Implication is the rule that lets you go from horseshoes to wedges. With implication, you go from a horseshoe to a wedge. The right side stays the same, but you do need to add a tilde to the left side. And you're asking why, who cares? Well, just follow me on this for a moment. Because the next step you're going to do is the De Morgans. Always a good thing. Assume the wind doesn't knock this out. De Morgans is going to give me tilde, tilde L, and tilde J. De Morgans from line two. What I like about this is that the conjunction. I can now do simplification to pull out the tilde J. I can pull out the tilde, tilde L, and maybe do a double negation on it. I'll have two really nice, juicy, simple things to work with. I'm looking at the conclusion. I know I want a tilde J as part of this, so let me pull out the tilde J using simplification. And now I need to get L and J. Well, I could probably figure out some way of doing that, but I can do addition and add any darn thing I want. So out of thin air, I can pull out the L and J. Just out of thin air, using addition. The wind is driving me nuts. That's going to be from line four. And we get our conclusion. We've seen addition a number of times before, but what I'd really like you to be aware of is this stuff right here. Anytime you see a negated conditional, try doing implication, then De Morgan's, and you'll end up with two things that are probably going to make the rest of the proof really fairly simple. Let's take a look at the second argument. <clears throat> okay, let's just take a look here. I see an M in the conclusion. I don't see it anywhere in the premises, so I'm probably going to do some addition somewhere along the line to get an M. Uh, let's see, what do we do here? I don't see much to do immediately with line two, but line one does fit the distribution pattern. So let's try distribution on one, if I can keep all this stuff together while the wind's howling around us. Okay, that's distribution from line one. And we've got a conjunction now, which is kind of nice. I can pull out either side using simplification. If I pull out the A wedge C, that matches up here, I can do a modus ponens. So I'm going to do a simplification. Which is going to allow me to do the modus ponens. If this is true, then the tilde E would be. So I now get to write tilde E with modus ponens. Oh, okay, now what do we got? We've got a tilde E. I'm still a ways away from the, the conclusion. Again, I know I've got to use addition to get the M in. Addition is going to be using a wedge. So somehow I need to go from a wedge with an M to a horseshoe with an M. What rule allows me to swing back and forth between wedges and horseshoes? Implication. Okay, so here's what we'll do. About ready to run out of room here, but I'm going to take the tilde E and add whatever I want I'm going to add an M. This is impossible with just two hands here. Uh, and the whole idea here was that I could now do an implication on this, changing the wedge to a horseshoe. And when you go from a wedge to a horseshoe, you lose a tilde. So that's going to give me E horseshoe M. 
with implication from line six. Now this of course is postmodern scrawl, but they don't pay me a lot of money, so my penmanship's not great here. But we can see what happens. We went from a wedge to a horseshoe, with implication the consequent always stays the same, but we lose a tilde, and we end up with exactly the conclusion we wanted. Barely with enough space. I'm gonna have Paul come in here. I bet he has something to say. Uh, may I comment on your proofs? Please, very, but, not, but not my penmanship. Not your penmanship, but yeah. very, very nice proofs, everybody. And uh, just a comment, when you're doing proofs using replacement rules, uh, it helps to sometimes think of these, of the connectives as little transformers that can change shape. I look at this horseshoe, if I were doing this proof first, uh, if I were doing this proof, I would look at this and I would think, hmm, that horseshoe needs to become a wedge. In order to infer this from this, I'm thinking, what, how, what can I do to transform this into this? Well, I'm going to have to turn the horseshoe to a wedge, so that's, of course, implication. And that's what Mark did first. Notice that, and this is important, implication is only applied in this case only applied to that formula within the parentheses. Do you see how he only implicated this part? So the tilde got, the tilde carried down unchanged. The implication rule did not affect the tilde outside the parentheses. It only affected what was inside the parentheses. So he, he applies implication and turns horseshoe to wedge, takes, adds a tilde to the left and keeps the right the same. That's implication. He kept the tilde on the outside out there he carried it down unchanged. That's how we got that. And then when you see a negated disjunction, you almost always think De Morgan. And it's not always going to be De Morgan, but it sure is a good bet. And he, t he did De Morgan. Here's how I like to explain De Morgan. You turn the wedge to an and, you put a tilde on the right side, put a tilde on the left side, and you add a tilde to the hole, or you can remove a double tilde from the hole if you've added a tilde. So we turn wedge to and, negate the left, negate the right, remove the tilde from the hole, and that gives in this. And then uh, emphasize that when you have an ampersand as the main connective, that always suggests simplifying. That's a real nice proof. Um, this, this formula has more constants in it than this formula, and that's why Mark was thinking addition. That always suggests addition. You're going to have to add something here. Be careful not to confuse addition with conjunction. He added with a wedge. Uh, conjunction is when you use an ampersand, and it's a whole different rule. And down here, um, when you see a, a, a disjunction across a conjunction, you know, that's, that pattern su should suggest uh, uh, um, distribution. distribution. So he distributed here. And uh, again, the ampersand suggests simplification when it's the main connective. Be careful when you do uh, simplification. You can only do simplification if the ampersand is the main connective. So if there were a tilde over the whole thing, or if the ampersand was not the main, you cannot do simp. But very nice proofs.